We've just returned from the inaugural cruise of the brand new Norwegian Prima. This long-awaited ship delivers a number of new concepts, amenities, and firsts at sea, and we want to share it all with you. See how we rate this ship compared to its sisters with our exclusive Norwegian Prima cruise ship review up next. Welcome aboard, cruisers. I'm DB from Eat Sleep Cruise, where we help you see the world one port at a time. And as big fans of Norwegian Cruise Line, we were excited to get to test out the brand new Norwegian Prima on its maiden voyage from Reykjavik to Amsterdam. This first ship of six ships in the new Prima class offers a variety of different dining venues, entertainment, and onboard activities, and we're going to break down everything for you in this cruise review. So let's get started at the very top of the ship with the main pool deck area. The main pool on Norwegian Prima is on deck 17 midship. Admittedly, this central pool is smaller than we would expect for a ship of this size, though that is rather typical for the newer ships in Norwegian Cruise Line's fleet. Still, it's conveniently located between other popular public spaces, including the Observation Lounge and the Surfside Cafe and Grill, the Cruise Ship's Buffet. One deck above, cruisers will find ample loungers facing out to the ocean on Deck 18. On the starboard side of Deck 18 is the Kids Aqua Park. Honestly, this area consists of a few water features and not much in terms of interactive or creative elements. A short walk from this aqua park is the entrance to a new attraction, the Wave Slide. This tidal wave style water slide is a fun and complimentary family activity. While the outdoor space at the top of the ship is limited, Ocean Boulevard on Deck 8 provides a nice retreat and perhaps the most glamorous outdoor promenade space on any cruise ship. On both sides of Ocean Boulevard, you'll find an infinity pool, loungers, and some day beds with ocean-facing views. This enhanced outdoor deck gets cruisers closer to the ocean while helping to disperse the crowds. Finally, for those looking for a more exclusive experience, there is the Vive Beach Club. For a current price of $249 a person, this reserved sun deck on Deck 17 is a private oasis. With a variety of lounging furniture, a bar, and two infinity hot tubs, this adult-only retreat might be worth the upgrade for many cruisers. When it comes to the sports deck on this mega ship, unfortunately, not many of Norwegian Prima's cruise ship's top attractions are actually included in the cruise fare. Perhaps the most popular sports deck activity is the three-story Prima Speedway. For $15 a ride, up to 15 cruisers can see if they have the driving skills to rank at the top of the leaderboard. New for this ship, for $20, cruisers have three chances to get the fastest track time of the voyage to win prizes with the U and the track experience. Nearby the entrance to the racetrack is the stadium. We appreciate that this reimagined outdoor space is complimentary. The stadium features plenty of tabletop games where cruisers and their families can challenge each other to classics like foosball and ping pong. There's even beer pong, minus the booze, shuffleboard, and a small pickleball court. Deck 18 is also home to the entrance of the two new dry slides on Norwegian Prima. On the port side is the drop, the first drop dry slide at sea. Here, cruisers plunge 10 stories as they hit G-forces equivalent to a F1 race car. On the starboard side is the rush. These dual racing dry slides pit cruisers against each other for a race to the bottom. While the slides are free, the additional activities on Norwegian Prima Sports Deck will cost money. At about $45 for 45 minutes for up to six players, the Bullseye is the first of its kind dart lounge at sea. This alfresco space is also on the port side of Deck 18. In this swanky new lounge, guests can challenge each other in interactive games like 301, cricket, and more. Nearby the bullseye is tea time. During our cruise, we were told that this mini golf course is set to cost around $15 for a nine hole round. While that does sound pricey, cruisers do have the chance to win prizes, including a free cruise if you have the putting skills. Either way, we were big fans of this Vegas style mini golf course. While technically indoors, the attractions at the Galaxy Pavilion on Deck 17 are immersive and fun as well, with a total of 14 virtual reality experiences, including simulators and games. Not to mention, there will eventually be two escape rooms in this area. 
during our sailing, we were informed that day passes for the Galaxy Pavilion start at $49 per person, or you can choose to pay about $8 per attraction. Of course, since we were on the inaugural cruise of Norwegian Prima, it is possible that some of these prices and charges could change on future voyages. It wouldn't be a cruise ship review if we didn't talk about the dining. This new Norwegian cruise line ship is home to several unique dining concepts. Hands down, our favorite casual option is the Indulge Food Hall. This quick service offers seven complimentary food stations, excellent service, and perfectly prepared menu items. The former upcharge Q Texas Smokehouse is actually now located here. For breakfast, the Indulge Food Hall serves grab and go options. From a variety of breakfast sandwiches to continental items, it's the ideal mix to suit all tastes. For lunch and dinner, the restaurant is table service. Seating is first come, first serve, with cruisers ordering at tablets located at each table. Be aware that it can be difficult to find seats in this new venue at peak dining times. Further, the menus are different for lunch and dinner at several of the stations. For lunch, the pad thai with shrimp, chili, and totopos were hits at our table. For dinner, you can opt for items like spare ribs, cob salad, beef tenderloin, chicken tiki masala, or the famed devil eggs from Q. Other casual eats on the ship include the 24-hour bar and grill, The Local. Located on Deck 8, this popular NCL restaurant now offers alfresco dining on Ocean Boulevard. The menu still includes staples like chicken wings, fish and chips, and burgers. Yet the local Norwegian Prima also serves up some new dishes like sausage sliders. Lastly, for casual eats, there is the Surfside Cafe and Grill. The cafe is a cruise ship's buffet. For an NCL ship of this size, the buffet and seating area are small. Though, it served better than expected specialties for lunch and dinner, like French bread style pizza, freshly grilled vegetables, grilled chicken, tacos, a pasta station, a salad bar, and plenty of sweet treats. On day four of our cruise, Norwegian Prima hosted NCL's famous seafood buffet in the Surfside Cafe. Shrimp, crab claws, oysters, and other seafood selections were plentiful here. On most Norwegian Cruise Line ships, the main dining room offers a rotational menu that changes nightly. However, the cruise line has made some big changes to its main dining room experience on Norwegian Prima. The ship now has two main dining rooms, Hudson's and the Commodore Room, which serve the same fixed menu each night of the cruise. This elevated dining menu is expansive with several premium options for starters, entrees, and desserts. Of course, you can order as much as you want with no additional cost. Among the nightly offerings are a crab cake, clam chowder, and coconut shrimp for appetizers. For entrees, cruisers can customize a pasta plate. Or there's classics like New York strip steak, dill Oscar, and grilled mahi mahi every night of the cruise. For dessert, you can get the New York style cheesecake, chocolate lava cake, creme brulee, and daily ice cream selections. Likewise, for breakfast and lunch, you'll find the same menu served throughout your cruise. During our eight night voyage, Hudson's offered breakfast every morning from about 7.30 a.m. to around 9.30 a.m. Typically, lunch was served between 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. each day, even at our ports of call. The lunch menu included favorites like a variety of tacos, fish and chips, and a French dip. Some dinner items are also on the lunch menu like the rotisserie chicken and entree salads. The Commodore Room was only open for dinner on our cruise. In our opinion, this menu at the two venues is large enough to dine here two to three nights of the cruise. Otherwise, for us, it'd be pretty repetitive. All Norwegian Cruise Line ships offer a variety of specialty dining. Norwegian Prima is no different. There are eight themed specialty restaurants offering globally inspired signature menus. All of these restaurants are included in the Norwegian Cruise Line Specialty Dining Package with a few items costing a supplement. Debuting on Norwegian Prima is the new Mediterranean restaurant, Palomar, featuring selections like grilled octopus, pickled oysters, and Dover Sole. The menu is heavy on seafood. There are also a few other selections like the filet mignon. During our cruise, it was tough to get reservations at this restaurant, and since Heidi doesn't eat any seafood, 
we made reservations at other specialty restaurants on the ship. Also new on Norwegian Prima is a dedicated sushi spot, Nami, located across from the teppanyaki restaurant. Hasuki is the Japanese hibachi venue on Norwegian Prima. New name, same great food and atmosphere. Other familiar favorites, including Cagney Steakhouse, Le Bistro, the newer NCL Italian restaurant Anda by Scarpetta, Food Republic, and Los Lobos can all be found on Norwegian Prima. Due to the nature of this inaugural cruise, we were only able to dine at two of the specialty restaurants. Thankfully, both restaurants are among our favorites, Food Republic and Anda. At Food Republic, we sat with some friends and ordered a table full of food. The spicy Korean fried chicken had just the right amount of tang, while my tiger roll was a crunchy mix of shrimp and tuna. Likewise, the Thai chicken lettuce wraps and pork belly dumplings were upscale takes on these classic takeout items. At Anda by Scarpetta, we split a pizza for a starter, along with the burrata and braised octopus. Then both of us went with pasta for entrees. All of these dishes were great. My bolognese was a hearty rendition with al dente pappardelle pasta, and I finished my meal off with another Italian classic, the tiramisu. We are certainly looking forward to checking out some of the other restaurants on an upcoming sailing, especially Los Lobos, as there have been many changes to that restaurant's menu. For a brand new mega ship, the service on board Norwegian Prima was friendly and prompt. There were plenty of staff to assist guests in all venues, including the restaurants and bars. In fact, there were over 1,500 crew members to staff the 2,500 passengers on board the ship. Even in new spaces, like the indulged food hall, the hardworking staff were on top of their game. Tables were cleared swiftly, food was delivered quickly, and they were quick to refill water or answer questions. In the main dining room, the wait staff were prompt as well, getting us in and out in under 90 minutes most nights. Additionally, Ian, our stateroom attendant, was always around to make sure we had everything we needed and asked about our day. He was friendly and always smiling. With any new cruise ship, there are usually some kinks with staffing and service that need to be ironed out. Surprisingly, we did not find this on Norwegian Prima. The increased crew to passenger ratio on the ship meant our inaugural cruise was smooth sailing. Even when we went to guest services to report noise issues in our cabin from the nightclub, the team made sure to follow up on two separate occasions to ensure there was less of an issue on subsequent nights. Over the eight days on board the new Norwegian Prima cruise ship, there were four ports of call, so we had just two full sea days. When in port, there were not many organized daytime activities. In fact, Simon and his entertainment team did not host many of the usual cruise activities on this sailing. Still, many of the new amenities were open on port days. From the slides and other sports activities to the pools and water slide, there were plenty to keep cruisers who did not want to go ashore busy. Given this was the inaugural cruise with media and travel partners, we do suspect that all of your favorite trivia, game shows, and other organized activities will occur on future revenue sailings. If you are looking to relax, the Observation Lounge is a great indoor spot, as is the three-story Penrose Atrium. Likewise, La Terraza and the Indulge Lounge on Ocean Boulevard are great outdoor spaces to take in quiet time and ocean breezes. Of course, when the ship is sailing, there are shops, a casino, the ship is also home to a fitness center, and the Mandara Spa. Further, there's an interactive art tour that gives cruisers a chance to learn more about the multi-million dollar art collection scattered throughout the ship. Norwegian Cruise Line has some of our favorite signature productions at sea. For Norwegian Prima, the cruise line is debuting two new theater shows. During our sailing, we were able to see Summer, the Donna Summer Musical. The show featured a phenomenal cast, including three powerful singers, playing the lead character at different stages of her life. Even if it wasn't our favorite NCL production, the 75-minute spectacle is the caliber of show we've come to expect from NCL. The second show set to debut soon is Noise Boys. The show is from the producers of Choir of Men, so we are sure it'll be a good time. Also, Nojin Prima's Transformational Theater 
feature some of your favorite television game shows at sea, where cruises have a chance to win real prizes. On our sailing, we joined the audience for The Price is Right. Our late night show featured a few special guests. Katy Perry and other NCL folks participated in all the fun, from spinning the big wheel to the showcase showdown. Norwegian cruisers like to have a good time, so we did our best to attend as many of the nighttime activities as possible. While daytime programming might have been a bit of a letdown, there were plenty of things to do in the evenings. Following the second showing of the Donna Summer musical, the Prima Theater comes alive as Studio 54. The space transforms from a theater to a three-story club, complete with disco balls. Several other venues all feature a variety of live music as well. A guitarist played sets in the local and Penrose atrium. Similarly, a duo offered theme sessions in the same venues. In Sid Norman's Poor House, the house band played shows which mixed live music with lighthearted humor and great drinks. If you want to attend this show, make sure to arrive early as this venue gets packed quickly. Further, the Improv at Sea offered comedy shows on three nights of the cruise. Given the venue is small, there may need to be additional showings on future sailings to accommodate all cruisers. On the off nights, the Improv at Sea hosted game shows and doubled as a nightclub. During our stop in Ireland, the Celtic band even came on board for a few sets. There were a few trivia sessions in the early evenings at the local as well. Many of the entertainment venues on Norwegian Prima are rather small. While we like that this makes them feel more intimate, it also means they get crowded. Popular places like Sid Norman's fill in at least 30 minutes before showtime. This new ship is also home to some new bars. Of course, for this cruise review, we sampled at least one signature drink from these venues. Whiskey lovers will appreciate the upscale whiskey bar on deck eight in the Pemrose Atrium. This venue offered a variety of finely aged liquors and a small specialty cocktail menu. Be warned that many of the selections are above the $15 limit on the Norwegian Cruise Line Premium Beverage Package. The Belvedere Bar on Deck 6 serves up signature bottle concoctions crafted by Bar Lab. I enjoyed the Bourbon Myth and Heidi enjoyed the All About That Basil. The Deck 7 Metropolitan Bar is home to sustainable drinks. We appreciate NCL's pledge to be more eco-friendly. And we did enjoy the cocktails like the Croissant Mai Tai, Cucumber Cool, and the Prima Donna. However, the venue itself lacks theming and is located right near the Cigar Lounge. There's also the Penrose Bar on Deck 6, the Observation Lounge on Deck 17, and the local bar sporting a new seaside theme. Many of these spots serve the standard menu with our favorite libations being the smoked peach margarita, monkey business, and red bubbles. Of course, venues like the Improv at Sea, Sid Norman's Poor House, and the Prima Theater also serve up typical drinks along with live music and entertainment. On the outside decks, you have traditional cruise drinks at the Waves Pool Bar on Deck 17 or the Speedway Bar on Deck 18. On Deck 8, the Soleil Bar serves a selection of beers, wines, and cocktails on tap, including my personal favorite, the Whiskey Orchard Press. This is a great bar to enjoy some wake views and perhaps a sunset. In full disclosure, while we like the new onboard drink menus, we do miss the Sugar Cane Mojito Bar and the District Brew House found on the cruise line's Breakaway Plus Class ships. We stayed in a balcony cabin on Deck 9 for this Norwegian Prima Cruise Review. Cabin 9148 is a forward-located stateroom on the port side of the ship. Actually, it's only a few steps from the forward bank of elevators. According to NCL's website, this Category BF cabin measures 231 square feet with a balcony of 45 square feet. Immediately upon entering our cabin, our bathroom was to the right, the forward wall, and our closet was to the left. The cabin is considerably bigger than a similar category room from our last Norwegian Encore sailing. Also, the decor is more modern and sleek with beachy wood tones, a neutral color palette, and pops of blue. We also appreciated the number of power outlets in the cabin. While the closet might be bigger overall, the actual storage space is still lacking. 
there are three small closets with a clothes rack and hangers. However, there are no shelves and only small wire basket drawers. Thus, we did find it a bit difficult to unpack all of our belongings for the eight days. Like most NCL standard balcony cabins, the balcony itself is a tad on the shallow side, but we did appreciate the upgraded and comfy chairs. On the other hand, the bathroom was a nice upgrade from the other NCL ships. The creatively hinged shower door made it easy to get in and out of this oversized stand-up shower. There is also a large vanity area and upgraded finishes. Our eight days on Norwegian Prima gave us the opportunity to explore the entire ship. While we were limited in terms of dining availability, we did get to check out all of the other amenities. Now, if our Norwegian Prima cruise review has you excited to learn more about the ship, we suggest you check out our complete Norwegian Prima ship tour and walkthrough. In that video, we go deck by deck, exploring all the public spaces and amenities from the dining venues, entertainment venues, bars and lounges, and everything in between, we cover it all in our Norwegian Prima full ship tour.